Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to scan and erase your check engine light. Don't forget to show your support by hitting that subscribe button and help promote my channel by sharing your favorite videos on your social media pages. To determine if your check engine light is working, you can turn the key on to the run position. There is no need to start the vehicle and this will illuminate the whole gauge cluster showing all the functioning lights. If your light does not illuminate, it is either burnt out or someone has removed it. Someone may have removed it to hide faults, a dishonest practice when done if someone is selling a vehicle. A check engine light, also known as a CEL, for short is a fault with your vehicle's engine, which will illuminate a light on your gauge cluster as shown here. When a fault is present, this light has two modes. One will be solid or stay on all the time and the other is blinking. When the light is solid, there is obviously a problem, but it's not an immediate issue. That doesn't mean it shouldn't be fixed either, as the fault can cause increased damage depending on what it is. For a blinking CEL, this means that there is an immediate issue where the vehicle should not be driven and the vehicle must be fixed immediately. First, we will need to locate the port. This is an OBD2 vehicle, which means that the second generation for onboard diagnostic system. For this vehicle, which is a 1997 BMW 540i, the plug is located under the steering column to the left. This is a standardized system, much different than compared to OBD1. This system has a generalized plug area, usually within 3 feet or 91 centimeters of the steering wheel, generic plug, and they share the same fault code meanings. Here is a 1998 Ford Ranger. This also shares a similar area this time towards the center, directly under the steering column, behind a cover. This system was a set standard in the automotive world in 1996, but you may find vehicles a year or two before with this system depending on the manufacturer. Once you've located the port, plug in the diagnostic tool, the plug only connects in one orientation. Sometimes the ignition can be left off, put in the accessories position, run position, or the vehicle will need to be running. I find this does depend on the vehicle. The scanner will still turn on, but it won't necessarily read the codes, which will be prompted with a connection error. Start with the vehicle off first, then slowly work your way up to each position of the ignition switch until the codes are read. Read the vehicle. For this scanner, we can press the arrows on the keypad to select the OBD2 scan. Press enter and the computer will be scanned for any fault codes. For this diagnostic tool, here I'm using one from Autofix model OM126. This particular scanner is around $50. I remember way back when the diagnostic tools such as this one were a few hundred dollars. This model here is also able to take live data, publish it to a chart, save data, has a built-in dictionary for fault codes, and can save data for printing purposes afterwards. I'll give more info on this particular scanner in the weeks to come. Once the scanning is complete, select the down arrow and then read the codes. DTC stands for Diagnostic Trouble Codes. We may either have current codes, which is code just scanned, pending codes, which are fault codes stored in the vehicle's computer that haven't occurred enough times or is on the path of being erased by the vehicle's computer, or permanent codes, which is a high priority error, select enter. For this specific code reader, the screen will prompt you to selecting what type of vehicle we're working with and the definitions will be based on this specific vehicle. We will see on the top right corner I have four fault codes. We are currently on one out of four, this being the P0505, which is an idle control system error. Next is P1174, fuel trim adaptation, additive bank one malfunction. Next is P1175, fuel trim adaptation, additive bank 2 malfunction, and P0420, catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank 1. Going through the other fault codes on pending and permanent, when there is an error on the vehicle's computer, this can affect anything from acceleration, overall performance, create hard starts, decreased fuel economy, or making an engine run rough. Other times, depending on the vehicle's parameters, it may be something so small you won't even notice a change in how the vehicle runs, but it's just enough to trigger an error. Next, we can exit out of the fault readings and clear the codes if you desire. 
Using one of these tools to scan your vehicle is an assist to help with the repairs and doesn't necessarily tell you the exact fault. For instance, the first fault code is P0505. While this relates to the idle control system, this entails that the engine idle isn't staying within factory specifications. So this could be an idle control valve that is sticking which needs to be cleaned or perhaps it's slowly failing. There could be a vacuum leak, that could be a cracked vacuum line, bad gasket, or clamp needs to be tightened, issues with the mass airflow sensor, and so on. When there are multiple codes, such as the next two, which relate to the first one, one error may be causing all these codes. Something that would relate to all the fault codes would be a vacuum leak, for example. And even if there isn't a check engine light, that doesn't mean there isn't an error with the vehicle. The vehicle's computer will store the code for a certain period of time, which is a pending code. If the fault disappears, the code will eventually erase. If the fault persists, this will trigger the light. If you don't fix the persisting fault, that code will keep coming up. Once those codes are erased, as you can see, there is no check engine light. New videos are being uploaded every week to my channel. Show your support by hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, please feel free to post them below. Thank you for watching.